Oh, cool. Okay, so it is live because it was playing on my other YouTube. Nice. We are live. Welcome. This is the Fantasy Golf Pod. Follow us. I'm Chad Eckert. That's Eric Martins. You're watching what is live this week and maybe going forward every week. Us. If you want stats and stuff, follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Golf Pod. Here, we just say names and give reasons. Like and subscribe. Follow us all season. Every time there's a DFS contest on DraftKings, you will find us talking names and reasons. We're not experts. We do watch golf, though. We love DFS. We love having fun. We crack beers. We click names. I am Chad Eckert, GSPN. My partner over there is Eric Martins Quagness. Cheers. Cheers. We're doing it live. We are partnered with Fantasy National Golf Club. Those guys over there, they can give you um, access to stats. You can create statistical models that will help you make decisions because that's what we're trying to do here, just make decisions each week. It's hard. These guys are all good. The 417th player in the world is going to win every once in a while. It's happened twice this year. <laughs> yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to try to do this kind of fun, back and forth, Eric and I, a little banter. And then what we'll do is I'll pare it down. We'll have all the best parts in a highlight video so that you could just get right to the names and right to the reasons. And if you want all the fluff and all the fun, then you can watch this long video or you can hang out this live. We don't know if you are able to chat with us. If you are, send us a little note. I've got a chat thing set up here. We aren't technology savvy. I am technically a millennial, born in 1985, although I don't really know how Google Hangouts and YouTube works. We'll probably end up having some technical difficulties as well, because that's a common thing for us when we film not live. <laughs> here it goes. So we don't know what's going to happen with this, but we're going to have fun. That's what we do here on the Fantasy Golf Pod. And we don't care if you stop watching this and you move on with your life. Because this is just Eric and I having a beer, talking names and reasons. The thing about us is that we're not experts. Like I said, we recognize this is roulette. This is a lot of luck involved. Lotto tickets. Next week, I want to <laughs> remind everyone that we've got a big show. I've got a surprise guest potentially making an appearance. And we will probably be doing it Sunday night. Since hopefully DraftKings will have the prices released early for the major, the PGA Championship. Oh. Can you do it Sunday night? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, we do have the DraftKings crate. The DraftKings pricing for the Byron Nelson. I've already had a couple of beers. So. Me too. Good times. Here we go. Uh, what we can do is we can talk about those names. We can start at the tippity tip top. This week, Brooks boy, Brooks Kepka. Somebody that will bomb it because he's bombs away Brooks. This will be a long course. It's 7,500 yards already, and apparently it's going to be wet. So. Brooks Kepka, 11 4. Serious. Someone to consider, though. Or is he? Because he hates regular events and he only wants to play majors. And this is the Byron Nelson. It's not the fifth major. What do you think? <laughs> no, it's not the fifth major. Who said that? I don't know. Somebody said that on Twitter oh. today. I can't remember who that was, but but so driving distance. So we've only got stats for Trinity uh, Golf Course. What's the Trinity name? Forest? Trinity Forest. Yeah. Dump. Yeah, on top of a dump built uh, new recently. Twenty eighteen was the first time it was played there, and I was looking at it, and driving distance didn't seem to actually play a role, and it was wet last year too. Hmm. Did you see that? I, dude, do I ever really look at the course? I don't really care. No, I'm looking at the stats. Stats. 
Actually, I actually didn't build my model until after I had picked the names that I wanted to pick. Oh. And then I built the model and hoped that they aligned, and it somewhat did. There's a few that surprised me. Fantasy National, honestly, great site. Run over there for a dollar a day. You can pretty much have access to everything and learn what you need to learn about human beings. And I learned that I'm not going to take Brooks Kepka because he is the top priced guy. And I always fade the top. Yeah. I also don't think that Brooks is going to give a shit about this place. And he's going to be focused on the following week, a major. He may intentionally miss the cut here. He's probably playing this because he's obligated to play this. I'm not into him. Brooks Kepka could be a big full fat fade for me. <laughs> it's, it's literally setting up for that too. I mean, it's the PGA Championship in two weeks. Yeah, he wants he wants to win a PGA. You know, not not tr at Trinity Forest. <laughs> not a Byron Nelson. Byron Nelson, like unfortunately, yeah. this, this used to be like a coveted tournament, I think. But <laughs> now you're looking. I think just each year it's been noted that it, the field just continues to get sort of worse and worse. And so, yeah, if you look, when you, when you see, uh, who do we have here? You know, somebody like Brandon Grace at nine, two or some of these names, like, yeah, just, no, uh, it's awful. Yeah. What I think is great is that Hideki Matsuyama at $11,000 is pretty decent. He's number one on my list this week. Thanks to his off the tee, his tee to green, his strokes gained in, uh, birdies are better. His opportunities gained. I mean, he's doing a lot of shit, and he's eleven thousand dollars. Would you pay up for a Decky at eleven thousand? He's got three top tens this year already. I will actually, okay. and it's steep. And but I saw the exact same thing, Sadeki. And this is a super weak field, so I, I think. Nobody cares about Hideki, though, do they? They just want to hear about our opinions on Jordan Spieth and whether we're going to take him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The Dallas native, the AT&T sponsor boy, who debuted here as a 16-year-old and had his best finish ever, wasn't on Trinity Forest, although whatever. At this event, he's had a T-16, and he was 16. He hasn't really been that great. I think he missed the cut last year. Did he? Why is he ten thousand eight hundred dollars? His stats are terrible. Because of his name, dude. Because he's once a wonder yeah. boy. He was twenty first last year. Okay. Well, he's. What do you think his ownership is going to be? We're talking about a, a multi major winner here, who everybody's off because he's bad. So isn't this Kind of one of the things we've talked about. Play him. Yeah, yeah. If it comes down to it on Wednesday night, I see on fairandshare.com that this dude is under 10% or he's hovering around that 12% because that's what they'll do. They'll bump him up in their own opinions. I think I might play him. I think I'll have a few shares. You just have to be smart about when you play him and how you play him and where you construct him in your rosters. So maybe I'll take Jordan Spieth. I'll look at the ownership. I am not taking Henrik Stenson. 10,300. I'm going to full fat fade him. He's in an, in a look ahead spot here. He doesn't necessarily care about this. He cares more about the major. He is, however, number one in approach in the last three months. But I see that too. He is 105th and off the tee, and he is 115th in putting. And he's 10 3. Ugh. I like a lot more golfers than that. I also like Leishman, 10000 I'll take him all day. So if I was going to take anybody in the $10,000 range, I was going to take uh, Hideki at eleven, and I'm going to take Leishman at ten. And out of those guys, I think is Leishman and Spieth, are they the only ones that played this course last year? I'd have to double-check that, but – do you think that, that Leishman wants to play on the President Cup? He's currently number one in the standings in that. So he was second last year. Somebody that loves beer and mowing his lawn. Well, um, yeah, we're clicking for that reason. But however, there is a reason not to click Leishman. His first six events of 2019, he had a win, an 18th, a fourth, a third, a 43rd, and a fourth. But his last 
five events versus real competition because you know those first few events are kind of bullshit. Uh, his last five, 62nd at WGC, 23rd at API, missed the cut at the players, 49th at the Masters, and 58th his last time out. He shouldn't be owned with that. So it sets up as a decent DraftKings play if Leishman is also under-owned this week. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the 9K range, and I might pepper that a little bit more than I do normally, thanks to a few names. One, at the top of the list, APPR. Patrick Reed. Oh, APPR, if you're new here, stands for always play Patrick Reed because he's a grinder. He wants to continue every round to the end. He will get to the end. He wants every single shot to count. I like that in a golfer. He also is motivated by stupid shit, like being on the President Cup team. And right now he's 17th, and only the top 10 plus two captain's picks make it. He also comes in low-owned almost always. 10% for Patrick Reed is about the highest he ever gets. So I'll take 9-8 Patrick Reed. I'm also going to continue playing Sung J.M., APP on JM, whatever. Uh, <laughs> in someday, he's also a grinder, and he is playing the PGA Tour or uh, the major next week. He has he played it last year too, but anyway, he's going for Rookie of the Year. Also going for that President Cup spot. He's 14th currently on the international squad. I like nine six is woo. That's crazy for Sung JM, but I feel a top ten is coming, and I know a win is on the horizon. He's a great par four scorer, Sung JM. He makes birdies. He hits greens. He's got a great approach game. All of this stuff is recent stats. Sung JM's great. And what happened last week with him? He was involved. 31st. He was around, but he was coming off a miscut at the RBC Heritage. We like Sung JM. You're right. He is going to probably get, I'll be shocked if he doesn't, rookie of the year. This mm -hmm. guy. Really good player. What about last year's almost rookie of the year, Aaron Wise, who won this event? Are you considering a 9 4 Aaron Wise for his off the tee game, or is he going to be too highly owned for you? I don't think he's going to be too highly owned, but no, I will still pass on him. Oh, really? Because I saw the tweet that was sent out. I'm not sure if you sent it out or whoever did, but. Defending champions don't typically have the greatest of success. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, only one or two have missed the cut, and only one has won so far in 2019. Paul Casey won the Valspar or whatever he won. Um, yeah, Valspar. Yeah, I'm tempered on that. I think he's going to be very popular at 9-4. I bet you he'll get too close to 20% which if that's the case, I might overlook Wise. And I will also overlook Brandon Grace. You couldn't pay me to touch him. Although he was third last year, and that make make him owned, <coughs> I don't like him. I think he's just bad. And, like, he hasn't done shit since his second at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. He's not that great. I'm not into it. I'll pay Brandon Grace 9-2. I think that's an overprice because there are names underneath him that I am very into. Like, kill a Keith Mitchell at 9-1 and Rory Sabatini at 9,000. Those are my two favorite plays in the $9,000 section. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you, actually. Although, will the Euro sort of, you know, it's a Lynx course, so Brandon Grace, Lynx course. I mean, he shot the record, what was it, last year at the at the Open? I don't know. Fuck him. <laughs> Partially because he'll be owned and liked by others, and I don't. You think? Yeah, that nine two is attractive for someone that was third last year. Someone right. that's still on people's memories from being second in February or something. Um, Killer Keith loves Bermuda, so you got to play him here. He's also number one off the tee in the last three months. He's number two in ball striking DraftKings points. He was third last year. And he was eighth last week. Killer Keith ninety one hundred dollars, and then Rory. At 9000 I think he'll be overlooked and under-owned. I think at $9,000, you see Rory Sabatini, and you run, and you're like a normal person. You're saying no, but I'm saying yes this week. Due to the fact that he has made seven cuts in a row, and he is one of the highest prices 
if not, I think he's the highest priced player in this field that is not playing next week. Mm. Because he has played in every single PGA championship other than 2013 in the last 19 seasons, dude. Rory yeah. Sabatini, $9,000. Very expensive, very under owned. You might pick him and you might pick on him, and no one will have that combo to start. Yeah, I was going to say, just looking at this right now, like if you did like Patrick Reed, Sabatini start, or M Sabatini start, that's that's really that's an interesting start <laughs> to, your, to your lineups, you know. And You'll have some room for depth in the 7000 Dude, I have so many freaking names in the $7,000 range this week that I'm excited. I'm, I'm loving this. Should we yeah. get into that 8K range? Yeah. Dude, Kevin Knopp. I'm back on him. He's good again. <laughs> He's good again. Yeah. You know why? I loved his attitude at the players with Tiger. That was so cute. And then he also followed that up with decent play at the match play. Decent play at the Masters. Made the cut. T46. And then, oh, T10 at RBC. And he's found his game around the greens. He was two plus 2.2 strokes gained. And he also putted well, 2.6 strokes putting at the RBC, where he's finished 10th. And he was sixth here last year. 8,900, Kevin Na, consider it. It's weird. I'm considering it, actually. It makes I am uh, looking at Ryan Moore, and he is popping in my statistical model, and that's too good. I don't I can't do that. I don't think I'm going to be able to click him because I think he's going to be looked at due to his past stats that don't have any bearing on his future results. So I'm going to fade Ryan Moore. <laughs> yeah. He's in, <laughs> he's in the model I made, just a quick little thing I made. Yeah, he's he's up there. Yeah, but... so good. They can't do it. 8-8. Eight, eight. He's going to be like the highest owned in the 8,000 section. I love beer guard. I love drinking beer. I love saying that his name is Beer Guard, even though it's Beer Guard or whatever his name is truly. Uh, I'm, I'm always on him, even though he's kind of bad in stats and he's got all red on Fantasy National. Uh, RBC, RCB, 8,600. He's good. He's good. He was 56% owned in cash at the API and he finished T3rd. So everyone was like, I love this guy so good. And then the next week he was 43% on and he missed the cut at the players. So I don't know if people will be on him as much. He's popping in my model and in my gut. So I feel like everyone likes that name. He might get to that 20% ownership. So you have to fade that. And I think what you do is you pivot to the two names below him, Charles Howell the third and Scott Piercy. I tweeted about Howell the third coming off of two missed cuts, performing very well after that, the last time that he missed two cuts in a row, he was T4 at this event. And then I couldn't even find in his entire career three missed cuts in a row. I looked. I might be wrong. I didn't look that hard. But <laughs> I couldn't find it. And, oh, Charles Howell III, he needs to be long off the tee. This is a 7,500-yard course. Well, you know what? 32nd and off the tee in the last three months. So he's not too terrible in this field overall in his distance off the tee. Charles Howell III as savings at 8500 as well click it and he had to, he's a good par four player and especially in the range that we need there's a bunch of holes that are 400 to 450 yards for par fours and he's doing really well in that category sure. and i like the fact that he's actually missed a cut or two i've been on him during these times but yeah oh yeah two missed cuts in a row never see that you just said it never see that ever from Charles Howell. Really, like, you barely see him. Yeah, exactly. Wow. It's it's weird to see him miss a cut. And why was he missing cuts? Because he was putting poorly last mm -hmm. week at Wells Fargo. And he got his approach game going, but that was what killed him the previous week at the RBC Heritage. So, yeah. I think we should look for a bounce back from Charles Howell and hopefully add a decreased ownership. I like, I like him. He's good. Cool. Me too. I'm also going to look for a bounce back from Russell Knox simply because he burned a bunch of people. The last time he was out, he was almost 40% owned in cash and he missed the cut after 10 straight events of making the cut. So Russell Knox at 88, no, 
8,000 on the nose, was 16th last year. He has decent stats. I like it. Let's go into the $7,000 range, should we? Or do you have anything else to say? Uh, well, I was just only going to add about Russell Knox is that his approach game went away for one round, but, and he was still just putting terribly. He was being saved because he was hitting the ball really close. Okay. So we'll just hope to see a turnaround there. But what about Ryan Palmer at 8,000? Yeah, I mean, he comes off the win with Rom and that team thing. and Yeah, I mean, that's um, – I don't know. I, I, he's yeah. a, he's, isn't he a Texas guy? He is. He is a Texas does, guy. Does that matter? I don't know. Has, I, I'm not – No, it doesn't matter. It never does. No, nothing, nothing matters, obviously. Like the one Texas guy that – or the one North Carolina guy that did well last week was some no-name dude. So it's like it makes no sense. Webb Simpson lives on in the course last week and didn't do awesome, so – I will say about Ryan Palmer is that he has he did play here last year, so he's at least seen the course. That's something I'm going to actually take okay. into consideration. Be people that have actually played the course, but I, I I do like Ryan Palmer. He set he sets up well for what I've been looking at. But okay. yeah, let's the rest of these guys: Peters, Norin, Olison. I mean, I don't know. People are going to probably say, "Oh, let's let's do the Euro route," especially if it if it gets dicey and bad weather i saw wind potentially for thursday but it's going to be wet like you said so is it really actually going to be like if it's baked out and windy that's when you're looking for euro guys true this is not going to be a baked out situation it's there's going to be a lot of rain i've been looking at the forecast so even if it is windy they're still going to be able to stick shit i don't know yeah true just all right now seven thousand range i've got a dozen names or so or more I love this range this week. I'm not going to pepper too much of the top of the range. CT Pan leads us off at $7,900. He won the last time he was performing. Uh, Scotty Scheffler is $7,900 as well. This brings me back and makes me think of Maverick McNeely, who was $8,100 last year, and we were all confused about that. <laughs> Although McNeely did end up finishing T42 at the event at 8100 Does that pay off his price? Not really. But at the same time, that's still decent compared to what I thought he would do. Will Scotty Scheffler finish better than T42? He has performed in his last five events. He's been second, seventh, fifth, 20th, and second. However, the only legit finish in that little list of finishes is his 20th at Valero. The other ones are like... Nashville Golf Open benefiting Snedeker Foundation and other pretty weak field events. So I'm not sure about Scotty Scheffler, 220th player in the world. What do you think about that? Are you going to bite into a new toy? Well, I, I need to look further into is he here on some sort of sponsor's exemption or like what's going on specifically with. That's just the name that it just popped the fuck out at me and I'm like. No way. Scheffler's all the way up at $7,900. Typically, you see him. I've seen him, and then he's not in those, in the real name range. Right. I mean, there's... there's Harding th played in the Masters. C.T. Pant won the last time out. Jimmy Walker's been a major winner. And those are the names around him. I know. I'm, I'm looking at the same stuff and kind of, yeah, wondering why the hell he's at $7,900. do not fall for that trap. I don't... Yeah. He he may end up forty second overall, and more likely going to finish close to where Tony Romo will finish. <laughs> yeah, I saw Romo's in. That's awesome. Um, I like names in the seventy five hundred range. I'm gonna click names. all. Four. I'm gonna click all four of those names. Click them all. Cage oh. Lee, that's my boy. Number two off the tee in the last three months, also performing well, and I like him. He's cute. He's young. K.H. Lee, 7,500. I also like Daniel Berger because of his off the tee game. He's sixth in the last three months off the tee in the field. I like Dylan Fratelli. I fucking love this guy. I've been touting this guy all season long, and I finally didn't play him last week, and he did well. He outperformed his T24 in finishing points with 79.5. Guy's made cuts. He's uh, looking to be in the President Cup. He's great. Dylan Fratelli. He is great. And K.H. Lee, 
all about that. <laughs> Did you say CT Pan was cute? Or what did you say about him? <laughs> Hello? Oh, my God. I'll start saying names. Jimmy Walker. Good. Finished six or something last year. Coming in with really good form. Not the greatest of form this year, but he's played the course. So I think there's a reason to look at Jimmy Walker. Pat Perez last week, his Achilles isn't fucked anymore. That's good. So I'll probably look at Pat Perez. I don't believe he played here last year, though. It would be the only thing that I'd like to check out. And I looked at a lot of these names. Did not. He's, in fact, not played this course or the Byron Nelson much at all. It looks like he might be back. Hello. We're back. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? No. <laughs> well, now you can. Hold on. Hello? Hi. Damn it. Hello? Well, hold on here. Let's see. Yeah, my stuff should be working. No, I can't hear you. What? Okay, hold, hold on. on a sec. Hold I on a sec. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I can hear you. Hello? Hello. Yay! What happened? I don't know. I was ranting about Matt Jones, and now he's my favorite in the 75 hour range. Matt Jones? Yeah. Oh. oh, did you not hear any of my reasons for Matt Jones? I was having a great rant. I didn't hear any of them. Did you hear me about Dylan Fratelli? I did hear about Fratelli. Okay, well, so my favorite in the 7500 is Matt Jones because of the fact that this dude is trending. He's made eight straight cuts, dude. He always performs well off the tee as well. He's tied for second off the tee with K.H. Lee, another 7,500 guy that I like. But he's also solid across the board. He's top 25 in all of these stats. Total, tee to green, ball striking, strokes gain, short game. Off the tee, like I said, around the green and DraftKings scoring. Matt Jones, 7,500. Oh, you want a guy that's kind of Lynx player too? He kind of fits that mold. He's somewhat Australian. I like it. What about you, Trey Mullinax? He's too popular, and he is the like flavor of the week and month with his off-the-tee game. He'll probably be really clicked. I think he'll probably get to that 10%. That's the type of guy that's so that's too good. You can't click him. God, I never click him either. So I thought maybe, all right. You're not, too late to the party. Yeah, way too late. And now, and then you'll be that chasing donkey that we talked right. about. Right. Don't yeah. do it. Foolish. I, I, you know, I'm not chasing Brian Stewart either. I might chase Bud Colley at 7,400. Last week I thought he needed off the tee game, and he was terrible. Well, he did okay. He was T24, gaining 1.7 strokes off the tee. Things can change. Stats don't mean shit because they're old information. <laughs> yeah, God. that's true. Uh, Barnrat, 7,400. He's looking to be on the President Cup team as well. He's had some decent results. He's 49th at the Masters. Oh, guess what, though? That's like a bad sign from what, the, what he's done. Barnrat, the last nine times out, making that 49th. Miscut, 23rd. Miscut, 3rd. Miscut, 33rd. Miscut, 4th. Do that again really fast, and it's cool. 49th, miscut, 23rd, miscut, 3rd, yeah. miscut, 33rd, miscut, Yeah, that's... Miscut every other time. Yeah. So Clark, <laughs> here, now, let's talk about going back to players that did miss the cut because I've got a list of those people, including Wyndham Clark at $7,300. I'm going to go back to him. Last week, he sucked. He was as bad as he's ever been pretty much since February. He had uh, just terrible off the tee, off the shit, everything. It was bad. Winter Park. <laughs> the shit. 
Uh, he's only been as bad as he was last week three times in his career. So I think he's going to be fine. I'll probably see a bounce back in Wyndham Clark and a lower ownership. Sung Kang, I thought you didn't need him on Bermuda, but he turns out to be okay. At the API, he gained like six strokes and finished sixth. So that was weird that last week he missed the cut. So maybe he'll bounce back. JT Poston, your guy. Mm -hmm. Will he bounce back? Most likely. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he will. He's too inconsistent, especially off the tee, in my opinion. So he's not a guy that I'll pick to bounce back. But I will pick Michael Thompson, 7,200 to bounce back. For sure. He's green. Pew! Across the screen on Fantasy National. I like him. Michael Thompson. Bounce back. Scott Dollings, $7,100. A smasher off the tee. He's never respected as much as he should on DraftKings first pricing. He is number one in scoring. DraftKings scoring gained in the last three months. Scott Stallings. Underpriced always. At $7,100, that's an underpriced. I like Troy Merritt. That's your guy. $7,100. Mm-hmm. Um, Shank, don't do it. What? Nope, can't do it. He's number one in strokes gained total in the last three months. That's what this means. You know what happens after this? Well, yeah, yeah, you always look at strokes gains for three months. Do you, do you ever look at recently? Because he's still actually okay. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, too good. Everyone will be on it. Oh, I'm going to get a sneaky play. His name's Shank. I love that because the golf people shank the ball. Oh, I love it. I just learned of him. Oh, I haven't been on him for all the three months of him leading up to getting to the number one spot in the overall total strokes game. So guess what? I'm going to add him right now. And he's going to be the Wyndham Clark of the week and everyone's going to play him. And then <laughs> he's going to be terrible. No, I'm still playing him. Okay, do it. Dare you. Um, I'm going to click. Kramer Hickok, Jordan Spieth's roommate, because I like it. And I think he's decent. I don't know why, but I'm going to do it. Kramer Hickok, $7,000, told some newspaper that the reason why he wanted to be Jordan Spieth's roommate because he didn't want to be his parents' roommate. So he chose Jordan Spieth <laughs> instead of moving in with his parents. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. $6,000 range. I'm not too sure, but I know for a fact DJ Trahan might be the most owned in this range. He is popping as well, and so therefore I will fade. He's actually bad at golf. Don't. DJ Trahan is not going to be popular. He's popping in like every stat. Not in my model. Well, that's because you look at the last four rounds. <laughs> I did not look at the last four rounds. I look at the last 12 to 24. Okay, well, it's whatever. Preferred. I'll just say the name that I like the most, which is Hank Lebiota. Nobody can pronounce it. It's Lebiota. And he doesn't drink alcohol. Huh. Because he has Crohn's disease. Oh. He doesn't fill his body with fried foods either. I like him. He won once on the McKenzie Tour. He's been a runner-up twice on the PGA Tour Latino America. He has four top 25s in his 12web.com starts last year. He was once the player of the year at Florida State for the ACC in 2017. He's motivated by having Crohn's disease. I mean, like motivated people at $6,700. Hank Labiota. Pronounce it correctly, people. Mayo. <laughs> uh, six six. Carlos Ortiz likes birdie. G Doug Gim is six five. I've heard of him. He's young. Jesus Rodriguez at sixty four. <laughs> and Lashley, also someone that's motivated because he lost both his parents and his girlfriend at the same time in a plane crash while they were watching him golf. He is showing up lately. He is sixty three hundred dollars. That makes no sense. Pick him, click him, 6,300, Nate Lashley. I also like Straka at 62, and Svensson, who's a young Canadian who doesn't really have a flaw in his game. He does everything decently. Jack of all trades, Adam Svensson, 6,200. That's my lowest price name this week. Names? He took all my names. I guess the only one I'll, the the only one I'll add maybe is at sixty three hundred. Tom Hoagie, we saw a flash. He made a cut. 
Yep. Yep. Okay. Made a um, so we were live, so I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. That's going to happen because my wife's probably streaming The Bachelor or some shit inside. Can't really help that. We're on the same internet. Um, and also, sorry we didn't answer your questions because I can't see them. So if you ask this question, we're sorry. And also, we probably give you a shitty answer because we're hashtag not experts. We don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> and no one does. <laughs> Because gambling is hard. And any reason is a good reason. So when you want to know what we think, it's probably good. Because it's what you think. And don't get tilted by playing other random names by touts that you don't know who they are. Play your names. Brand plays. That's what you do. Play names you like. Yeah. Um, what you do is you don't need to fall in love in mad love on a Monday because things will change. Players can also sense expectation. And so then they fuck up. So maybe wait till Wednesday to create every single roster and, or make all your decisions. We have the same conversations each week, Eric and I. Typically, they're around ownership, and they're around making s stupid mistakes that we continue to make. They're about playing players who are actually not good DraftKings players and, in fact, are just good players, sort of. So what we need to do is shift our focus to what makes a good DraftKings play. What do you think makes a good DraftKings play versus a – Golf slash gut play. Someone who is a DraftKings play. What does this mean? We need to start embracing risk. <laughs> we need to start embracing not only risk and then also who nobody wants, Correct. especially good players that nobody wants. Last week it was Sergio and Rose. Nobody wanted That's those it. guys, and they're no. fucking good. Since no one wanted, I mean, household names, when they're ignored, you have to play them. Right. It's the ones that are non household names that you ignore when everyone's playing. Right. Regardless of what you actually like looked up, your stat model spit out, what you feel, what you've like seen, Sergio's been bad, Stenson's been bad, whatever, no one's on them. They can click in a moment's notice and be good again. That's how they do it. That's how they're the best in the world. So don't overthink it. Don't pretend that you'll actually know how they'll perform either. Everyone will say that Brooks Kepka is going to win this week because he's the fucking best in the field. Guaranteed he's going to win. He will fucking lose. He will miss the cut because that's how it works. Every week. That's why I like to fade the top price guy. Mm -hmm. um, in comparison to lower priced that does well, it's impossible to predict. What I'm saying is like, it's hard to actually win when you're favored and it's hard to miss the cut when you're favored. He will win the tournament is also the same as saying is he will never make the cut. We don't fucking know. If the guy says, if someone says this guy will never make the cut, he's probably more likely to make it than miss it. And if the guy says he's going to fucking win, guaranteed, he's more likely to not win for sure. That's how it is. Choosing players and pools based on contest type is also very important and vital to your performance on DraftKings and in daily fantasy sports. If you pick these random names in a single entry contest, it doesn't give you much advantage. You probably should just only pick the really crazy random bad names in those huge contests that cost you a quarter to enter. The higher you get up into the pricing, am I boring you? No. <laughs> you need to do what you what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, I'm gonna spray and pray. That's my strategy. I'm not gonna carefully construct my player pool. I'm just gonna spray because nothing fucking matters. Well, that's your that's your thing to say that nothing fucking matters, but it doesn't. But I'm not gonna pay, pray and spray. I'm gonna manage my risks based off of ownership projection. 
what you need to do is you need to take less shares off of the lower priced, potentially chalky plays. Last week, I failed to do this. Last week, I took nine shares of Wyndham Clark out of my 24 shares or lineups. Nine. Ooh, oh, ouch. I liked him. I thought he was a great play. So did everyone else. My leverage was to not take as many shares of him instead of leveraging his actual performance to what people expect of him. Because his actual performance to what people expect of him, that fucking matched. And I don't like that. When they match, it's bad. So what you need to do is you need to find a player that has, you know, people are expecting high of him or they or you are and that others aren't. And they're like, not on it. Like, just that's the name of the game. That's drafting. Oh, oh, you need luck. <laughs> Imagine that. Which is why this is fucking gambling and it's roulette. So don't spend a lot of money on it. Um, you know what? If you're at the casino and you're playing roulette, we talked about this as well, and you're going to come home for the night and you're going to say, oh, I figured it out. I figured out roulette. No, you fucking didn't. You fucking can't figure out roulette. It's not figure outable. DraftKings and stuff is not figure outable. So ultimately, the best strategy is to know. Don't come home and think, next time I'm going to do this. Oh, because this happened, next time I'm going to do that. No, best strategy is to do the same shit over and over and over again. Develop your routine and then just do it over and over again. You're, my, you're more likely to hit that way. That's my opinion. Don't pretend to be smart. We're not smart. All I'm saying is that I'm dumb. That's what we're saying is that we know we're dumb. We recognize that. So we're not going to overthink it. We're not going to complicate this thing. I'm going to play my brand plays over and over and over again. And all of a sudden, one week, I'm going to get lucky and I'm going to hit. Or if one of my brand plays is under-owned, I'm going to over-own on that. That's DraftKings. That's that's betting. Like, literally, people that go out and, like, at the casino, they have their, like, lucky numbers that they always play when they do craps or mm -hmm. some of these other games. Like Do that. That's, that's do that with DraftKings. Pick your lucky. Like almost, it's like, yeah, it's basically the same thing. And then, and then one week, your lucky name is Chalk. Take less shares. I should have taken less of Wyndham last week. I would have been okay. If he had popped and done well, I would at least have those five or four instead of those nine that ruined me completely. Now, you, you, think, got, ruined? you got ruined? Well, I got ruined by Woodland, and I got ruined by a lot of things. <laughs> but at the same time, Doretta Levy? I never heard from her. Oh. <gasps> I have never heard from Courtney Reese. Well, I did. Hey, Courtney. I don't think she actually plays fantasy golf. I think she's got other motives for watching this. <laughs> <laughs> um, regardless, I got our boy Justin B up in here. He wants to win, actually. So we're going to pick again. Fuck it. Doretta Levy. I'm, I don't know. It's a fake name. This is for a month at fantasynational.com. Where you can get stats. Where we can do stuff and get stats. All right, here we go. Someone wins. Please be Justin B. Ooh, this is a real name, sort of. Not really. John Tyler Osborne. If you were watching this. <laughs> fake name. I know, I don't get that. That's a good name, though. But, yeah, um, if you're watching this, you're going to win a Fantasy National subscription for one month. Also, next week, when we have our PGA Championship, the second major of the season pod with our special guest player uh, in the industry, someone who has knowledge of things and is also a very fun and interesting follow on Twitter, that guest will bring with him another drawing for another month at FantasyNational.com. We're partnering together. We're going to give you guys, if you comment on this pod, and you comment on your our PGA pod the following week. We are going to draw a name just like this again. John Tyler Osborne. You can win again. Fuck it. Comment. Type words. Hit send. Thank you again for following us live. Sorry we had some technical difficulties throughout the process of this thing. Um, stay tuned for a highlight video. If you didn't catch all of it, you can watch it again. It's going to be posted, I'm sure. I don't know how this works. Either way. Here we go. Ready, Eric? Are you done? Yes. Oh, whoops. That's the end of it.
Thanks, everybody. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks. Good See you next day. Week. See Good ya. Day. Follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Golf Pod. Cheers. <laughs> what?